So I prayed about it. I said, Lord, I just want to thank you that I am the redemptive connection to take that curse off that name and to release the blessing of God throughout the family. I am that redemptive connection. I am that one that can, that can change that. And so we've got to understand that there are places where you've got to see yourself as the redemptive connection with the kingdom of God, that you will release the blessing of God upon those things. So we're in a we're in a place where the father is wanting to get the family in line. Get his house in order. So we need to listen for the voice of the father. We need to understand that our King, Jesus, is not just a friend, but he is our King, Lord, Saviour, Deliverer. So we've got to understand that Jesus is more than our, our friend, more than our Saviour. He is our Lord. He is our Deliverer. He's our Baptizer. He is our High Priest. He is our Shepherd. He is the anchor for our soul. He is the Rose of, of, the, of Sharon. He's the Lily of the Valley. He is the Son of the Most High. He is the Son of Man and the Son of God. He's the Wonderful Counselor. On His shoulders, the, government, the, the, the authority of the government reigns. And his government is an ever-increasing government. But we have to understand his authority. When do you come before him as the Lord of hosts? When you have financial difficulties, that's when you come before him as the Lord of hosts. Because it says three times in Malachi, when it talks about the tithe and the finances, when it talks in James, when it talks about money that's being withheld from you, it is the Lord of hosts. And we go to the Father and say, Father, I need this. Well, Father, we do. But I need the office of the Lord Jesus Christ. I need his office as the Lord of hosts when I have a financial need. I need his office as my shepherd when I have an area of my soul that needs restoration. We need to understand the different offices of Jesus Christ and honour them so that we actually become truly functional citizens of the kingdom of God and we need to understand the power the authority the presence of the Holy Spirit he is in every book of the Bible he wrote the Bible and even when the Holy Spirit is not mentioned by name there is a symbol of him oil wine uh, fire cloud whatever it might be light he's in there the holy spirit is amazing if you want a copy of the 268 names of the holy spirit that i've got just ask me for them i'll send them to you and i've got more coming but you know what we need to understand what we actually are serving in the kingdom of god what we've done is we've taken our australian citizenship and what it means to be an australian citizen and we said well now i'm a kingdom citizen and it runs pretty much the way australia does it does not. And there are covenant guardians, threshold guardians, that every time we enter something new, there is a threshold covenant guardian, whether it's angelic or demonic. What we carry in our heart determines what is released. There's stuff that we need to know that we don't know that is causing us to fall, you know, to, to miss the fullness of what he's got for us. But the love of God is such that he wants every one of you set up, set straight and moving forward to take hold of the destiny he's got for you. He wants you to know the truth so that you can move in the truth and take the truth with you to other nations, to other countries, to other places, to other families, to other, other situations. You, we need to go. And I don't care if you go to the corner shop and release the gospel there. As long as you go and take the truth. So anytime I'm in a situation that looks pretty bad, Jesus, save me. You're my saviour. Save me. But we need to know who, who we actually serve. And the Father is setting his house in order. He's bringing his family into line. Thank you, God. Thank you, so spiritually, you are like fully equipped, complete in Christ. You've got everything for life and godliness. You've got everything. It's just we've got these few cracks in our soul where our thinking is not aligned with the truth of the word. Where we sometimes think, but my opinion 
is greater than God's. Well, yes, God, I accept that you've forgiven me, but I can't quite forgive myself for what I did. That is idolatry of self. And we have placed our judgment upon that situation above God's. Come on, guys, it's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. We've got a nation at stake. We've got a younger generation that's growing up that doesn't even know there are Ten Commandments. Does not even know. And the world will not walk in the fear of God until we do. When we walk in the fear of God, it will overshadow the world. But if we're not walking in it, it won't touch the world. It's time for change. It's time for change. And as the Holy Spirit told praying Hyde, I do not want you to say one thing about that man because I love him. And so we are too quick to say other things about other people that are not a blessing, that are a judgment, they're an accusation, they're a put down. I'm guilty of it, we're all guilty of it. But praying high, started to pray about this man in India and he said, God, because this man was not a good man and he was a pastor. And so praying Hyde was going to go to town and say, God, you know, this man, this pastor. And before he could get anything out, the Spirit of God shushed him and said, don't you say one word about someone I love. And he said, well, what, how do I pray? And he said, thank me for the good you see in them. Well, it took him two weeks, but he found he was good to animals. So he started thanking God that he was good to animals. And do you know, within two weeks, that bad man, his church had revival because of the power of the blessing. Because of the power of the blessing. Anytime we allow blessing and cursing out of our mouths, we're a mixed well, there's leaven right there. The power of the blessing. So any time we think things like, but I've always done it this way, I can't do that, it doesn't make sense to me, I don't, I don't have time, I'm not creative. Any time we have any negative thought, you cannot allow the luxury of a single negative thought. It is a luxury that you cannot allow because it does not come from God. Your father is the most encouraging, loving, wonderful. Just wanting to see you fulfill destiny, reach your full potential, go to the nations and go everywhere he's called you to go. He wants that more than you do. So you can't allow the luxury of a single negative thought. I need the Holy Spirit to help me block them. So we need to grow up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for Christ. Thank you that he died for us. Thank you that he took our place. Thank you that the sin nature died within us. Thank you that he gave us his victory. He gave us his life, his victory, his righteousness, his wisdom, his sanctification. He gave everything, an abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness. He gave it all to us as a marvellous gift. And all we have to do is receive. We don't have to achieve anything. We don't have to try and be anything. We just have to say, thank you, Father. I receive the finished work of Jesus Christ. I receive the finished work of Jesus Christ. And I give you all the glory. Amen.